Hey folks, Scott Walters, Bulletproof Garage. Today we are working on a Borg Warner 1356 transfer case for old Project Brutus, all right? So we're gonna disassemble, hopefully rebuild it if it's not junk, and install it in Project Brutus, all right? So uh, let's talk about the transmission. So these are often found in uh, Ford trucks and Broncos and such um, from the 80s into the 90s. This one appears to be an earlier version because it's got the speedometer provision here, all right? So the later ones did not have the speedometer provision on the actual transfer case, all right? It was moved. So uh, it's also, I believe, an F350 version because it has got uh, a provision for PTO as well, all right? And that's this guy right here, right? So you could bolt up a PTO to it. Um, and I say F350, I think the F250s and the F350s um, version of the 1356 had a PTO provision, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with disassembly. Okay, up first, we're gonna remove the speedometer drive assembly, all right? Because if we don't, we may damage the speedometer gear uh, when we remove the tail housing. All right, uh, gear looks like it's in good shape. Okay, four bolts holding on the tail housing and that's a T50 Torx. Yeah, I can tell already that somebody has been inside this transfer case already. Um, I'm seeing a fair amount of RTV here, and that's not factory. All right, so kind of making me nervous. I prefer something that nobody has messed with. Yeah, RTV out the wazoo. All right, that doesn't look all that bad. Again, we got an excess amount of RTV, but uh, hopefully whoever was in here before didn't mess it up. All right, this comes off next. Um, this is a, is it a washer, is it a seal? This is splined and it's rubber. And that just slides off. Okay, um, in order to remove the speedometer gear, this clip comes off, all right? And then there's a ball bearing right there that sits in that slot right there, all right? So that's how that comes off. All right, now we've got a good size snap ring right here that needs to come off. Okay, snap rings off. All right, now it's time to undo all of these bolts. They're also T50, so we can get the case split. All right, lots of RTV here, so let's see if it comes loose. Yeah, I don't think it's coming loose without a fight. There it goes. All right, I heard something drop. All right, that spring popped out. All right, you know what? This looks pretty nice in here. I'm wondering if that's not a fresh rebuild. Um, I'm still gonna proceed with the tear down. Um, that pump, the filter looks nice and clean on it. Um, the chain looks nice, the gears don't look like they have much wear. Wow, you know, 
I'm wondering if I should just stop with what I've got and uh, and put it back together. But at the very least, let's go ahead and get it torn down and get it cleaned up. But uh, but we may be in good shape here, folks. And uh, and this is the good news that that I could use. All right. So let's continue with the tear down and inspection. All right, we get another snap ring to remove here. All right, that slides off. This slides off. All right, we get another snap ring here. Um, but it's the kind that you use these type of snap ring pliers for. Um, it doesn't have holes in it. All right, that's off. And now this should just slide off. Then the magnet pops out right here, and then the pump slides out with the shaft. And I tell you what, I, I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. I think this is a, uh, a fairly fresh rebuild. Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the bearing surfaces on here, and they're not worn. The pump looks like it's new. Yeah, this is the good news that I needed, folks. All right, let's see, this should, all right, that shaft comes out, and let's see what we got here. That slides out like so. All right, I got the magnet cleaned up, but there wasn't a huge amount of metal on it. I mean, it had some metal on it. That's to be expected, though, you know. I've, I've seen better, but I've certainly seen a lot worse. And you know, the RTV situation really isn't that bad. You know, this looks like it was gone through by somebody who knew what they were doing. Cautiously optimistic that we're going to be able to use this thing as is. And now I'm patting myself on the back for not having ordered the rebuild kit already. You know, I've been burned by that before. And you order the rebuild kit and then you get it open and you either don't need the kit, you don't need all of the kit, you need more things that you should have ordered with the kit, so I'm glad I kind of held what I got on this one. All right, let's get the yoke off next. All right, that just slides off. That just slides out, and that looks mighty fun. All right, next we're going to get the planetary out, but there's a snap ring behind this seal that needs to come out. All right, so the seal needs to come out first. Folks, if you don't have a seal removal tool, I recommend that you get one. All right, um, they're not that expensive, and they're better than using a screwdriver to do this job. Having said that, here I am using a screwdriver for it. All right, yep, just needed to get that started, popped right up, all right? Yeah, <laughs> I can see a scar where somebody else has been in here with a screwdriver. All right, well, I got my seal remover handy. Let's go ahead and get this one out. My seal removal tool has seen better days. I got to straighten that sucker out. All right. Well, 
that's out. Let's get the planetary out next. I'm going to put a block of wood here, or two blocks of wood, so it doesn't drop down once I release it. And now that I've got the seal out, I can tell that it's that type of snap ring um, that doesn't have holes in it, so you're going to have to use this type of snap ring pliers. And then you got to get down there with a pick. And once you release it, you need to kind of walk it up. All right, there you go. And in theory, you should just be able to lift the case off and the planetary stays where it is, like so. And that all seems to be in pretty nice shape. Yeah, let's get a little corrosion here, but that's just from sitting. All right, now you've got this ring right here that'll come out um, and while we're in here, why don't we just go ahead and take it out. Just kind of pry it out like so. That's in good shape. And now this guy just slides right out. Like that. All right. And we are almost done with this assembly. Now the question is, do I want to continue? Um, and I think I'm going to hold what I got. I mean, uh, this is your shift mechanism here, you know, and that's not something that's going to wear out, all right? Uh, and that's not something that's going to get in my way. That's not going to keep me from being able to clean the case. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to stay there. Um, now, one thing we've got to do still, though, is I do want to go ahead and remove these bearings. All right, that's going to take a screwdriver and a pick. All right, so that is for the larger bearing right there. And basically what you've got to do to get these out, you want to go behind Once you get started, you can just go ahead and work it on out. Come on, get on out of there. All right, got one of those. One big one, one smaller one. Now we can go ahead and tap the bearings out. I wonder if they'll come out with a piece of wood. Well, how about that? Not gonna get much softer than a block of wood. All right, that's one bearing. This is a, let's see, NTN. Uh, looks like it's Japanese. Let me get this one out too. Okay, these might be fine to reuse, but um, you know what? I need to reuse them and then have them go out uh, first time I put it in four-wheel drive, even though they feel fine. I, although I feel a little bit of grit in this one here. Uh, we'll go ahead and replace those. All right, let's go ahead and get the PTO cover off. Um, I really don't need to get it off or anything other than to clean it up. And uh, I'll wire brush this thing and put some paint on it, I guess. Yeah, plenty of RTV hiding back here. Wow, that's a bunch. I guess they're worried about this thing leaking because that is enough RTV for about five of these. Look at all that. Folks, if you're a little intimidated by tearing down your 1356 and rebuilding it, I, I wouldn't be. Um, I mean, this is, this is a job. The first time you do it, uh, it may take you an hour and a half. 
um, to tear it down. The second time you do it, it'll probably take you um, half that, if not less, all right? So, as long as you got the right tools, and there are no specialty tools here. I mean, the seal puller, I guess, but, you know, uh, I use the screwdriver more than I use the seal puller. You know, you got to have the right Torx bit, um, but uh, other than that, I mean, this is, it's an easy day, all right? So, now for the fun part, stuff that I do off camera, um, cleaning this sucker up, and that's going to take some time. Okay, now we've got this bearing to drive out right here, all right? Just going to tap it out with a piece of wood. I've got the... Uh, I've got some blocks under the case here um, because it's going to come out the front of the case. All right, there's that. Yeah, it looks like all the bearings were replaced at one point, or they're the or they're the original ones. This is another uh, made in Japan NTN bearing. Feels nice and smooth. Ah, there's a little bit of something in there. Okay, last bearing to remove right here. You know, it looks like it's in good shape and it feels pretty good, but I've got a new bearing in the kit and you'd hate to have that go out, you know, 50 miles down the road. So let's go ahead and replace it. Uh, I've got a Harbor Freight um, blind hole puller set or something like that. All right, so he's that guy down there. Tighten it up. And then give it a few good wax. Alright, now it's coming. All right, there we go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up this bearing pocket right here. Um, if y'all seen any of my other videos, you know that's a process that I'm a big fan of. Um, if you heat this up, it'll expand it slightly, and the bearing itself is in the freezer right now, so it'll contract it slightly. So when you've got an interference fit, and especially when you're installing something like a bearing, you just don't want to pound the heck out of it when you're installing it. Um, it every little bit can help, so a thousandth difference is going to make this job a lot easier. All right. I'm able to get it up to about 150 degrees here. Um, so let me go grab the bearing out of the freezer. All right, that's bottomed out, so we're all good. As I'm sure you could see, that didn't take a lot of force to dry that in. If we would have gone with room temperature on the case and room temperature on the bearing, it would have taken some effort, all right? And I'm just not real interested in screwing up a bearing that might be hard to source individually. All right, on this next bearing, it needs to sit fairly deep here. Um, so I didn't get a measurement before I pulled it out, but it's clear from looking at the casting here, all right, the machined area, you can see where the color changes. Obviously, the bearing sat down um, where it's a little darker right there. And getting a measurement, I'm getting 0.26. So basically, the bearing needs to be a quarter inch below this surface, all right? and. Uh, by that point, I'm assuming it's going to be bottomed out. Same drill as before. Let's heat up the case where the bearing's going to fit. All right. There's no right side up or upside down on the bearing. All right. Just drop it in. Yeah, and that wants to go down. Oh wow, yep, and that's what happens when you heat stuff up, it just goes right in. 
Yeah, I think that's it, folks. Yeah, okay. I can see from the bottom, that's bottomed out. And I got about a quarter of an inch right here. All right, good to go. All right, this bearing's fresh out the freezer. That's got a snap ring that holds it in place. All right, so let's go get the snap ring. All right, yeah, there's a groove that the snap ring fits in. All right, it's in. Just had to fiddle with it for a while. All right, the last bearing to go in the case is this guy here. Um, but unlike the one that I took out, this one has a groove in it and it came with a snap ring on it. But the bearing, the original bearing didn't have a snap ring and on the bearing itself, it has a snap ring uh, in that groove on top of the bearing. So I just pulled the snap ring off and it's otherwise the same size. So should go right in. I think that's in all the way. Yep, you can hear how the noise changed when it bottomed out. All right, let's go get the snap ring for that one. Now this one might be, just go in by hand. Bada bing, bada boom, all right. That one was easy peasy. Okay, moving on. All right, let's go ahead and get the PTO cover back on. Um, we're going to use a reasonable amount of RTV on this. Don't want to make a mess. Okay, all the hardware here has been cleaned up. I hit it with a wire wheel. So let's go ahead and get this on. All right, as a reminder, when you're working with RTV, you go finger tight and then give it a few hours to cure and then you come back and torque it down. All right, so we're just doing finger tight right now. All right, next up, this ring right here. Only goes in one way, and then the snap ring that holds it in place. All right. All right, let's get the planetary gears in. This is the snap ring that's problematic. But if you've got the right snap ring pliers, it shouldn't be a big deal. All right. Well, it goes on a lot easier than it comes out of there. All right, inside the planetary gear assembly, there is a copper or bronze bushing. I'm not replacing it. I can't see that it's got any wear, doesn't have any grooves, um, doesn't appear to have any damage. So we're gonna leave it in there. All right, let's get the oil seal on. I put a little dab of RTV on this. All right, and there's an imperfection here and here where somebody, um, well, one is for me, and then one was here when I went in it, but just a little dab of RTV um, because that's not quite flush, all right? So um, what I also do is add a little grease to the inside. So a little grease where 
it rides on the shaft, all right? All right, that's in. Okay, same deal here. RTV and some grease. And this one also has a few scars right here. I'm just gonna make sure I hit those. All right, that's in. Now I have the high-low shift fork, and there are these two rubber pieces, or sleeves of some sort, um, and one of mine is broken. Uh, thankfully, my rebuild kit included some new ones. Let's go ahead and get these out. Or do you do it like that? Let's try like that. Yep, there it goes, like so. There you go. And now you've got to slide this guy into your shifter. Let's see. Okay, so high low shift fork, um, and there's your slider. And this goes into your shift. There you go. That rides in there. All right, and that. Looks like it does anyway. All right, and that's in. Okay, main shaft going in, um, but just temporarily, and you'll see why here in a second. Okay, so now let's talk about the pump rub, all right? So this is the oil pump here. You know, I didn't take it apart, um, take it off. Everything here looks to be in good shape. But the problem is this arm right here, all right? Let me pop this out. Uh, you can see that it's worn right here, all right? That is wearing down, and also it's wearing down the case, all right? So it's not bad yet. All right, it's just starting to wear the case right there. But that will eventually wear through, okay? And when that wears through, then the pump is going to spin, all right? The pump is supposed to remain in one spot, and that's how it is actuated, all right? But if the pump starts spinning, it is no longer pumping. And if it's no longer pumping, it's just a short matter of time before you burn up your internals. All right, so this is just a poor design by Borg Warner, and there's a way to fix it that involves grinding off part of this and welding something on, all right? So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, let me show you what we've got here, all right? I took a piece of scrap metal that is, oh, I got .362 inches thick, and then I cut it to, um, 0.5, yeah, about 0.545 inches wide, and it is about 1.7 inches long, all right? And then I made sure that it fit in here, all right? Actually, I think I had it going better like this. All right, yeah, so it fits there. And then I took the um, the pump arm here and I cut the tip of it off. And I've got it to where this should fit nicely, just like that. All right. So let me mark that with the scribe. And that's where it needs to be welded. Oh great, now we're, oh, there it is. All right, get it welded up.
get it done. All right, folks, uh, finally done with this. So you can see I welded a piece of scrap metal on here, all right. Um, yeah, my welds aren't the best, but it'll work. Um, I had to shape this piece a fair amount to get it to sit where I wanted to. What I didn't want to do is I didn't want it to put a bind on the shaft here, which it was doing because it was too thick, all right. So I thinned it out some, and now it's ready to bolt on, and it's just gonna fit like so. All right. And it's not gonna be protruding above the surface right here, all right? But you can see how it fits right in that slot. All right, you can see a little bit better how it fits in the slot right there. All right, and the bolt holes right now are perfectly lined up. And I'm not putting any pressure on the shaft at all. All right, as you can see, the uh, the pump pickup goes right in there. And now let's go ahead and bolt the modified arm on. All right, again, um, please don't uh, <laughs> critique my welding um, prowess or lack thereof. Um, it's gonna hold, all right? These bolts had some Loctite or something on them. Um, there's some yellow residue on there, so we'll put a drop on each one of them. All right, and as you can see, the pump arm has a little bit of room to wiggle in there. Again, I didn't want it to be tight or binding. All right, good to go. <laughs> okay, your magnet slides into place on top of the pump pickup, all right? And then your front output shaft drops into place, all right? So it's gonna go like so. All right, now you just slide on the gears and the chain. Okay, now I've got the mode slider and the mode fork. Install those together. All right. All right, this goes next. Then your return spring. All right. Don't forget your spacer, all right, and then you've got the snap ring here. All right, got all that. All right, let's get this snap ring on here. All right, that's in. All right, let's put in a bead of RTV on the case here. Just pre-lubing a few things here, folks. All right, case half going on. There it goes. All right, and this is important. Finger tight on the bolts. Finger tight, because the RTV hadn't set up yet. All right, I'm gonna let that set up for a few hours before I go ahead and tighten them down to spec. All right, the RTV's had time to set up, uh, so let's go ahead and torque these bolts. Um, you know, I couldn't find torque specs, um, so I'm gonna start with 30 and see how that feels. 
and we're going to do sort of a crisscross pattern here. Actually, I might as well stand it up uh, so I can see better what I'm doing. say we go to 35 and call it good since there's nobody else here but me I guess the eyes have it all right cases together and I think I'm going to do the same thing with the PTO cover bolts. All right, calling that good. All right, if I can remember how this went back on, that clip just fits over here. So probably to keep the speedometer gear from going too deep and then the speedometer gear has a channel right here it can really only go on one way all right so the ball bearing is gonna fit right in there and then there's only one way for the gear to go on so let's see if I can get that lined up there that was easy enough Okay, now a uh, thin coat of RTV on the mating surfaces here. All right, finger tight on here, just like everything else, until the RTV gets down and shut up. All right, I'll come back and torque it to spec. Um, the torque on this is, should be right around um, 32 to 34 foot pounds. All right, same deal here. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of RTV on the seal. And then we're going to get some grease on the inside of the seal. All right, that goes in like so. Let's go ahead and tap this on. And here comes the rain. All right, let's see if this works. I think that does. Well, sort of. All right, that's in. Okay, now we're getting close. Um, I'm gonna put the yoke down. I've greased up the back side of it. All right, and then this rubber washer goes on. I'm gonna make sure I push down that washer before I put the, I don't know if that's a washer actually. That's a rubber seal, I guess. All right, so the seal goes on, pushing it down, and then the washer. All right, 
and then the nut. Um, let me go ahead and Loctite this bad boy. All right, this is going on with red Loctite. And a one and a quarter inch 12 point socket works here. Um, ju just barely though. And let's see if we can finish it off with the torque wrench. On these, I'm seeing a torque value from uh, it as 150 uh, to 180. All right. So let's see what I can get here. Oh, outstanding. All right. Let's try. 165. See if that works. All right. All right, 165 sounds about right to me with some red Loctite. I don't think that's going anywhere. Folks, I think we're done. I think the next thing to do is install it in the truck. Uh, I've already tested it, all right? It shifts fine. All right, that is it for this episode of Project Brutus on the Bulletproof Garage. As always, thanks for watching. Now, two requests for y'all. Request number one, if you found this video helpful or informative, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Request number two, post a comment, all right? Even if it's just to say, hey, Scott, thanks for what you're doing. Or if, even if it's, hey, Scott, you really screwed something up, all right? Criticism, pat on the back, just checking in. I love to hear from y'all, so post up a comment if you've got one. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.